Hale and uh, welcome to the video and welcome to Cano Faf Long Exposure Photography. Yes, if you watch this channel on a regular basis you'll know that I don't like Faf. So with long exposure photography we often think of dull overcast days and that is actually the ideal. We don't want sunshine like we've got today here on the Yorkshire coast. And as you've seen in the intro, uh, we have took some shots in the bright weather and I'll explain how I've done them later. First, let's just go through some history. So thinking back uh, over many years, I've had different filter systems. I've had square filter, round filter systems, mainly screw on and slide on for the square. And the screw on filters um, really put me off long exposure photography because there was just a faff screwing on, screwing off, getting stuck on uh, cross threading. So to be honest, I didn't enjoy uh, long exposure photography until 2022 when I bought a magnetic system. Brilliant. So let me show you how I go about doing long exposures. We're waiting for the tide to go out because the main subject to photograph is this sea stack. So we've come at an outgoing tide which is what we want for safety and uh, yeah we just need to wait for it to go a bit further out and it will expose some rocks. But in the meantime I'll take you through the process with the Nikon D850. To take long exposures we need to manage the light. So to do that, we need a couple of things. The first thing we need is one of these, a clicky thing. On the Nikon D850, its native longest exposure is 30 seconds, which for most things is okay. Here's a, a few shots I've just took at one second. I've just had continuous setting on the camera and the shutter speed was one second. Just simply getting shots of the sea moving in and out. But sometimes we want to take longer shots, particularly with a seascape like what we've got behind us. And for that, we need to use filters and we need to use one of these. Now, on the Nikon D850, there's two settings for long exposures. One's called time. And on the time one, you can press the shutter button down and that opens the shutter. And that will stay open until you press the shutter again. But I don't like that because I'm having to touch the camera. And the thing about long exposures, you want your camera nice and rock solid, not moving, sitting on a very sturdy tripod, which we've got here. The other setting on the Nikon D850 is bulb, which is on most cameras. And bulb allows us to connect this. So we plug this in the front, clicky thing. And this allows us to press this down, open the shutter, and when we want to close it, press this button again and there's also a handy timer on here as well because we need to time how long we need the shutter open for a given light that's in front of us using a filter. In 2022 I bought a set of filters, uh, a set of three, so it came with a polarizer, a 10 stop and a UV filter and I've used that ever since. I added to it a three stop filter now that obviously combine the two together 10 stop three stop gives us 13 stops of reduction of light coming into the camera sensor and on a day like this this is where 13 stops becomes very useful if it was overcast we'd probably get away with a 10 stop but because we've still got the sun out at the moment we're going to need 13 stops, I think, when we get this. It is forecast later to cloud over, so we might see a difference then. So, got my filter kit. The great thing about it, it's magnetic. It's a garlic bread moment using magnetic filters. It's like driving an automatic car for the first time. You think, whoa, no gears. Fantastic. So, magnetic filters just simply go on and off. And at the same time as buying magnetic filters, I got a magnetic lens cap as well. 
I was forever losing lens caps. If you go around the Peak District and look down in between the rocks, you might see one of my old lens caps. And it's all about when you pinch them in. You pinch them in to put them on, you pinch them in to take them off. And sometimes when you let go, they just fly out of your hands. So I bought two magnetic ones at the same time. And they just go straight on, just like that. No messing around, straight on, dead easy. Same with the filters, the magnetic filters go straight on the camera and they also stack as well. So if you want to put polarizer on, then add the 10 stop, then add the three stop, you can do that and they all just magnetize together and hold onto the camera. And that's really useful. So let's go through the process in a bit more detail to take a shot. First, we want a bit of a composition. The composition is gonna have the C-stack in it. Okay, so I've set up a composition. It's not fantastic, but we'll just make the water as smooth as possible. So, we've got clicky thing attached. That's dangling down there. I've got my 10 stop and my three stop filter. What I need to do now is work out what the exposure is going to be with these two filters added on. So we'll just pop these down for the minute because we don't need them just yet. Let's imagine we're gonna go for an exposure that's just over a minute, so one minute, 42 seconds. Now what I'm doing, I'm using an app on my phone and I'll put that on the screen so you can see it, so it makes sense. App on the phone, it's showing me I'm using 13 stops, so I'm gonna have both filters on the front here. My current, and what we have to do is have a look what the current exposure is. So we're gonna get his ISO down nice and low. We'll have it to 64. So we're on ISO 64, F11. And that's given us a normal shot of 1 80th of a second without filters. Now on this app, that's telling me that a shutter speed of 1 80th of a second with 13 stops of filters on the front will give me an exposure of 1 minute 42 seconds. So that's what we're going to do. So here's the 10 stop filter, clip on, here's the 3 stop. We've now got the two filters on the front and now we can take our exposure. So 1 minute 42 seconds, so we've got clicky thing, we hold clicky thing down and we stand here and we wait for 1 minute 42 seconds. Okay, 1 minute 30, 1 minute 40, 1 minute 42 seconds. Let go of the shutter button and there's the exposure. It's okay, it demonstrates the effect we're looking for. We did focus on the actual C stack, so if we look at the image, we've just smoothed out the water. So having the three stop and the 10 stop is very useful on a sunny day like this. We can still do long exposure photography. It gives you that flexibility. Okay, let's just look at this Cano Faf long exposure photography. Let's take a few letters away, okay? Take a few letters away and we get K and F, okay? Kemp Faith. So these filters are Kemp Faith filters and they're very, very competitively priced. But not only that, the glass is really good that they use and that's very important because some of the filters I've used in the past they've given awful cast and if one thing that these filters don't they don't put an awful cast on the image that you have to reprocess later so the quality of the glass on these filters is really good and, and previous shots I've took let me show you one I took at the uh, this is down at the power station in Nottingham on a previous video this shot had the 10 stop and the 3 stop on and you cannot tell that there was a filter being used there on that exposure and I think that is really important so KNF filters there's affiliate links in the description where you can get 10% off uh, this filter kit or anything else you want to buy and uh, just put in at the checkout Craig and you'll get that 10% discount. Thank you to KNF for approaching uh, myself. In fact, and they also approached Eddie Skelton as well. We are going to build a long-term relationship with KNF. 
Right, let's wait for this sea stack to expose itself and we'll take a few more shots. Well, rather than staying on the beach, we decided to go back up on top of the cliff for a bite to eat in the calf stroke restaurant. Spent too much time there and by the time we came back down on the beach, the tide was much lower than I'd planned it to be. If we look at these rocks on the right hand side here, the plan was to get the sea receding over these rocks because they make a very nice leading line. So. I'd only got this little sort of stream of water coming in to, uh, to make a shot. But we got some shots and the, the light, the sunlight, did make for some very nice contrasty black and white images. This was pretty much the same at this rock arch. The water had gone much further out than I'd planned to take it. I did get some reasonably nice shots here. We'll show you those in colour. in the morning uh, the tide was very high which we knew because that's the the idea was to arrive at high tide so we walked down to the drinking dinosaur and uh, fortunately there was 291 seals there on the beach which made a really nice composition and I decided to do a long exposure here and uh, this was a, a 13 stop exposure just to smooth out that water and see what the results would be. And it made a really nice black and white contrasty image. Okay, that was uh, an epic fail there to misjudge the tide, but that happens in photography. We get things wrong. Nobody's perfect. So, two favourite shots from this shoot. One is this one, uh, the black and white of the drinking dinosaur. And what I love about this is a few things, actually. We've got layers of light on the sea. We've got the dinosaur itself and that's got uh, lighting, got some nice light catching the edges of the dinosaur. And then we've got on top of that, which is the important part of this image, is the seals on the beach. And the seals are doing exactly what we do when we go to a beach. We invade it and we lay down and we sunbathe. And you know, lots of vloggers go to Antarctica and various parts of the world to get shots of wildlife and we have our own wildlife here on the Yorkshire coast and it's so nice to see so many seals present on this beach 291 I did count them by the way yes I counted them and it's just such a, a natural shot and the seals being there really gives the photograph a good talking point the second image we saw this next shot as we walked back up the cliff and I said I'm going to take that 
and I did, and my shot was rubbish. Helen, who was with me, also took the shot and got this. And this, I love this to bits. She's really nailed that as a composition. The sweeping stones going up the side there, um, pointing towards the lighthouse that's just popping up above the cliff. I love that. I need to go back and take that. Damn. But that, for me, is a really good shot. And it doesn't matter it's iPhone. It's the final image that matters. Love that. That's the best shot I think uh, she's took. So well done, Helen. I love that. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a like. Pop a comment in the bottom. Which was your favourite shot on this shoot? And on that note, I'll see you later on the next one.